as of today, based on the information and the, and the facts as we know them, we are now investigating these horrific acts as an act of terrorism. We have uncovered evidence that has lead, led us to learn of extensive planning. All right, joining us now is Brad Taylor. He's New York Times best-selling author, retired Special Forces Lieutenant Colonel, and author of The Forgotten Soldier. There it is on your television screen. And uh, terrorism expert as well. Brad, great to see you, sir. Thanks for having me. All right, before we get to the book, um, let's talk about today, finally, uh, the right. FBI saying it's being investigated as an act of terror. Mm -hmm. is, is that semantics? I mean, because uh, later on he said, we're investigating it as an act of terror for good reason, but couldn't bring himself to say it was it's an act of terror. Right. Yeah, well, I mean, it's clearly it's an act of terrorism. I, I'm baffled by the, by the going back and forth. Uh, workplace violence is usually, it's an individual effort. You don't go home and get a teammate. You know, hey, my wife, I'm mad at my boss, let's go yeah, slaughter let's everybody. drop the baby off and, and go. By, yeah, by go. the way, let's put some pipe bombs up front. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's clearly it was terrorism. And, and, and what, you know, when you look at the political correctness, I mean, certainly in your capacity serving uh, our country, uh, I would imagine, I want to put words in your mouth, that you weren't thrilled with all the rules of engagement, which many people have complained about. And here it seems uh, the FBI, uh, you know, is, is under this political correct uh, you know, umbrella or cloud, if you will, uh, as well. I think, it, you know, initially I could see why you wouldn't want to come right out and say it, because, you know, Bre Brenovic over in uh, Norway, when he slaughtered everybody, right. they immediately came out and said, oh, you know, it's... It's uh, Islamic terrorism, right. it turned out not to be. Right. Uh, but within a short amount of time, I mean, certainly after you shot them and you had their information, who they were, uh, it's clearly terrorism at that point. And it would seem to me, you know, this, this uh, even Loretta Lynch, the attorney general yesterday, was saying, oh, it could be a hybrid. This is a right. new, the hybrid of terrorism and workplace violence, as if that makes it okay. Know, if you're some... angry at work, then go commit jihad. Right. It's, you know, maybe it's, you, he was offended. After all, he might have had a good excuse. Parsing the words, it doesn't make any sense Crazy. at all. And, and, and what could the motive have been? Well, you know, it was a Christmas party. I, I, I listened very closely yesterday, and the police said it was a Christmas mm -hmm. party. Well, if you're a jihadist, that could be motivation to go shoot the place up. I think that the one thing that uh, is still outstanding is the uh, there's got to be some kind of claim of credit, somebody saying, I'm doing something. I think... I fully believe that they fully had a, a much bigger attack. Well, the wife plan. pledged allegiance to, right. to the leader of ISIS or during or before the attack. Right. I think that they, they got short-circuited because somebody called the police before the initial shooting, and they were short-circuited from doing the second attack. Yeah, I, that, I think that, they had a huge plan in place to claim all kinds of credit and everything else. And, and you know what's a little frightening is that the, um, the sheriff then took the, uh, the podium after the, uh, the FBI representative and, and, and repeated what the FBI guy said, which was he's not aware of any further threats at this time in the United States. And they asked the sheriff, but isn't it possible that in 20 minutes mm -hmm. something like this could happen again? And exactly. he said, yeah. Well, I also find it hard to believe that these two acted alone. Uh, there had to be some kind of technical expertise. There had to be somebody giving them instruction on how to build these devices. Uh, and somebody, well, right off the bat, we know they didn't buy the two assault rifles. Right. Somebody gave them the assault right. rifles. Well, they say they know who bought the assault rifles. They have a location on them. They're not under arrest. So I don't know right. if they broke any laws. And one other thing, the crime scene. Um, all, all the reporters are in the house. No. They're touching everything. The landlord opened the door up and they all flooded in there. I it mean, like, that can't be by <laughs> accident. They must have, he must have had permission to so, let them in. Isn't well, that bizarre? Yeah, what I learned is that it's the San Bernardino uh, Sheriff's Office still had the crime scene. The FBI released it. And so when the FBI released it, the landlord said, okay. I mean, you talk about other, other actors. We, we heard reports of people going in and out of there. Wouldn't you dust everything for fingerprints right. and want everything left intact the way it was? Yeah, it would take forever. I mean, there's some murder scenes that are, that are still locked down. Nobody can get into them. Insane. Amazing Just there. insane. All right, let, let's talk about the book, um, the, the Forgotten Soldier. Uh, Pike Logan, uh, yeah. for those who follow your work, is, is back. He's back. It's Pike Logan number nine. And uh, throughout that, he works for a counterterrorist task force that uh, has minimal oversight. It's a fictional organization. Uh, and throughout the series, I've always had this theme that, uh, you know, that thing could go bad. If you don't have, we have oversight for a reason. Uh, and in this book, one of the soldiers goes bad. And what, and, and well, I don't want to give away everything, but, but I mean, that, you, you base this on maybe not on actual events, but certainly based on your, your time spent certainly. serving and, and yeah. your experience. So, I mean, we, we've seen, you, you talk about somebody going bad, you talk about uh, n n another workplace violence incident, Fort Hood. Right. right? Well, no, <laughs> not, it's not that way. This no, not that way. I know that. I know that. He's but doing, he's, he's attempting to eliminate some terrorists for what he believes are good reasons, right. and they are terrorists, but right. the government's saying you can't do that. You can't do that. And uh, he's about to expose a lot of people, and he's killing some Will, killing there, be some a, will there be another, uh, uh, will Pike Logan be back again and again? Pike Logan's coming back on book 10. I'm writing right now. I'm moving away from, 
uh, Islamic terrorism and looking more along the fault line of the Iron Curtain, old Cold War, oh, boom, that's east versus west. Great. And you know, right away, the, the first thing the media said after the shooting in California, uh, we could report it was not a Planned Parenthood, <laughs> as if this was going to be some kind of, you know, <laughs> yeah, follow-up. Right. And, and by the way, Copycat. that guy mumbled, supposedly mumbled, no more body parts, no right. more baby parts. So, ah, we know his motive, but they still can't yeah, call this an act of terror. It too. is insane. <laughs> Great to talk to you. Thank Great you very time. much, folks. Thank you for having me. Uh, my pleasure. Uh, pick up the book, The Forgotten Soldier. And uh, it is a, a thrilling read. And if you haven't uh, gotten the books prior to that, pick those up as well. And uh, check out uh, Pike Logan and his uh, adventures. Up next, we're going to check out the adventures of Ed Klein uh, and uh, talk about the presidential race and the latest on Hillary and her stance on this whole terrorism issue. Don't go away.